by the end of this video we'll have sound effects in our game, like when our frog walks, we'll have a nice, randomized sound where the pitch changes so it doesn't get annoying. Also when we open our chests, we'll get a nice little jingle. We're also going to have a volume slider in our game so your sounds can go from loud to quieter. Cute. So in our previous series where we made a platformer, we had a video where we added in a sound effect manager to our game, where I said, we're going to be adding sound effects to our game like this, or this. If you've completed this video, you'll have the scripts, or if you're on my Patreon, you can grab the scripts on our sound effect managers post. I'll link both the video and the Patreon below, but for these, I'm going to be looking at the sound effect library script and the sound effect manager script. So if I started from scratch, I'm going to be repeating a 10 minute video for you. So I'm going to drag in the sound effect library and manager scripts from our other project into our assets folder of our project. To set up our sound effect manager, I'm going to go inside our game controller, right click on our game controller and create an empty game object called sound effect manager. On this sound effect manager, I'm going to drag on both of these sound effect scripts. On here, we're also going to want an audio source. So we're able to play our sound effects. Cool. Now you can see on our sound effect manager, we have a slot here for a sound effect slider. In our UI, in our hierarchy, under our menu, under pages, I have a settings page. I'll turn on my menu so we can take a look and activate our settings page. And here we have our save button. I'm going to right click and go UI slider, call this SFX slider, double click on it so I can see it in my scene view and drag this down below our save. I'm going to open this up, go to open the fill area and go to the fill and set this to a color I can see better. So when I go back to the sound effects slider and set the value to be one, so our sound will be turned up, I can see the background a bit better. So cool, we'll click back on our sound effect manager, drag this sound effect slider into the slot and if by magic, this will now work for us. So cool, I'll turn our menu back off. And first of all, for an example in our game, I'm going to add a sound effect to our chest. Inside the Ninja Adventure asset pack that we've been using, there's some sound effects and music provided. So inside sounds, and then inside game, there is a sound effect called success one. You can pick whatever you want, obviously, for your chest opening sound effect, but this is what I'm going to use. So cool, I'm going to drag this into our assets then right click and go create folder and call this sounds and drag that success into the sounds folder. Now in my sound effect manager, I'll show you how to use the sound effect library. This will be a script to store all our different sound effects for us. So if I open up sound effects groups and click this plus, we get a new element in here. If we open up this element, we can give this a name. So I'll call this chest and then we have a slot for our audio clips. So I can drag success inside this audio clip slot. And if you wanted this to play different random sounds, this is where you'd be able to drag in a different sound effect. So randomly it will go between two different chest opening sounds or three or four, however many you want to add in here. You just keep dragging them in. I'll just use the one for now for the chest and we'll look at multiple sounds in a bit. Now to call this chest sound effect, when our chest opens, we'll go to our chest object and open up our chest script chest, chest, chest. So in our chest script, when we interact, we open our chest. So where we set open to be true, we can also go sound effect manager, which we can call because this is a static instance script and then go dot play brackets. And we pass in the name that we made inside our sound effect library. In this case, this will be chest. Let's go inside our sound effect manager and take a look at this play script. You can see we pass in our sound name. So we're passing in chest. We go to our sound effects library to grab one of the audio clips that we passed in that list of audio clips. We only add one, so it will just be that one. And then we play this audio clip. So cool, back to our chest. We now know what this line is doing and that is all you need. Let's go and test this out. So now if I press play, or as I press play, we can see this don't destroy and load game error comes up in our console. This is from our previous game where we had changing scenes. So we didn't want the sound effect manager to disappear as we moved scenes. To fix this error, you can just drag your sound effect manager to the top of your hierarchy so it's not inside your game controller. Or if you don't plan to move scenes inside your sound effect manager script, you can remove this don't destroy on load line. I'm going to comment this out for now so that in future, if we do want to change scenes, we can just add this back in. So cool, since I commented that out, I'm going to put it back in my game controller and now I'll press play. Now when we walk up to our chest, we can press E and you heard a nice little sound effect. Now this repeated sound effect is quite nice for chests 
as it doesn't get that repetitive opening up and hearing that nice jingle. But for something like footsteps, it would get a bit tiring hearing the same thing over and over again. So you might want a randomized pitch or multiple clips passed in. So let's add some footstep sounds to our player so we can check out how to do those things I just said. <laughs> so first let's set up our sound effect library. We have a new sound effect group. So we'll click the plus at the bottom and we'll call this footstep. Now we'll need some new audio clips put in our sound folder and I'm gonna create a new folder inside our sound folder called footsteps as I'm gonna be using multiple. Now there is no footsteps in our Ninja Adventure asset pack. So I looked online and the ones I liked the best were these free ones from Dryoma on itch.io, which I'll link below for you. And I grabbed the dirt sounds since most of our ground is dirt looking. And inside we get 21 sound effects for footsteps. So in my new footsteps folder, I'm gonna select all of these sound effects and drag them in to our game. Now on our sound effect manager, I'm gonna click the little padlock at the top here to keep our inspector from moving when I click on other things so that I can select all of our footsteps and drag them in. You can drag them onto where it says audio clips. So they all go inside this array. Now, when we call play footstep, it's gonna play one of these 21 sound effects so that our footstep sounds don't feel repetitive. I'm gonna unlock this padlock again so we can go to our player and go to our player movement script to add in the footstep sounds. So at the top, I'm gonna want a private ball to know are we playing footsteps currently? And I'll set this to equal false by default. And then we'll also want a public float, which I'll call footstep speed. And I'll set to a default of 0.5F which will be the time we use between playing each footstep sound. So basically how fast your player walks. You'll have to play around with this variable a bit to get it to match your animations and player's speed. So cool, if we take a look at our script, we can see whenever we basically set this is walking to true or false, we're also gonna wanna stop our footsteps when our walking is false or start our footsteps if our walking is true, like when our magnitude is greater than zero. So I'm gonna scroll down the bottom and write two new functions. One being avoid stop footsteps, where we'll say playing footsteps equals false. And then another on top of avoid start footsteps, where we'll say playing footsteps equals true. Cool, so of course, if we just went sound effect manager dot play and passed in footstep, we'd call start footsteps and this would play once. That won't work. So of course we want this to keep repeating until we stop moving. Luckily, Unity has a handy function called invoke repeating, where you can pass in a method name by going name of, passing in your method here, then going comma zero, which is just the time, which we don't really need for this. And then we'll pass in footstep speed, which will say how often this will be repeated. Now to get invoke repeating to work, we can't just pass in sound effect manager here. It needs to be its own method. So I'm gonna write another void play footstep, which we can move the sound effect manager dot play footstep into. And in this name of invoke repeating, we can go play footstep. Now, when we call start footsteps, we'll set this to true and invoke repeating every footstep speed to play this sound effect. Cool, cool, cool. When we stop footsteps, simply, we just need to say cancel invoke, name of, pass in, play footstep, and semicolon at the end. There's our functions all set up. Let's go on above and call these. So when we pause our game, we want to stop our footsteps. So we can call stop footsteps here. Now here to start our footsteps, we want to say if, and we can copy this RB velocity, magnitude greater than zero, use it down here as well, since this shows if our player is moving. And if we're not, so exclamation mark, playing footsteps, so the sound effect isn't already running, then we'll start our footsteps. Else if our RB velocity dot magnitude equals zero, so we've stopped moving, we will stop our footsteps. Very cool. Let's go back to Unity and test this out. So once again, in our sound effect manager, we've got 21 options for our library to go through as our player walks. So let's press play. Now, when we walk, we can hear all these different sound effects. Very cool. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, this sounds quite realistic for a 2D game. And I feel like it just doesn't suit our little froggy vibes. I'm gonna remove all these audio clips by typing zero in the amount and in our footsteps sound folder, you can see on the icons of these audio clips, the size of the audio waves. So I'm gonna pick this one cause it looks quite nice and quiet and drag it into our audio clips. Let's take a listen to see what that sounds like with one repeating clip on its own. To me, that sounds a bit better, but after a long time, that repeating sound gets a little annoying. 
So on audio source components, you have this pitch slider. Changing this slows down or speeds up the sound. I'm gonna edit this pitch to randomly change each time we take a step. However, I also use this audio source for our opening the chest, but I don't want my chest sound to change randomly. So what you can actually do is add another audio source. So we've got two on our sound effect manager and one we'll use for randomly pitch sounds and the other we'll use for our normal sound effects that we don't wanna change the pitch of. To do this, I'm gonna go inside our sound effect manager script and I'm gonna duplicate this line where we have this audio source. So we have two here. Then call the second one random pitch audio source underneath where we set up the instance and get our component for the audio source i'm going to go audio source square brackets audio sources equals get components with an s and pass in audio source so we can get both audio sources on our game object then for our first audio source i'll set this to equal audio sources square brackets zero which just means it'll be the first in the list then we can set random pitch audio source to equal audio sources square brackets one next down where we have our play function we pass in sound name i'm going to go comma bool random pitch and set this to a default of false so that by default most of our sound effects won't have a random pitch so now inside our if audio clip does not equal null statement we'll go if we do want a random pitch we'll set our random pitch audio source dot pitch to equal random dot range and pass in 1f which is your normal sound effects pitch and 1.5f so we're pitching it up by half before we then go random pitch audio source dot play one shot and pass in our audio clip. You can change this range even lower to 0.5 if you want. So you get some deep bassy footsteps and then some high pitch ones, but I'm just gonna keep mine at 1F for now. Test it out if you like. And then we'll simply say else and move our normal play one shot to our normal audio source. So cool, that's a nice little upgrade to our script. Let's go to player movement and scroll down to where we play our footstep. In here, we can now type comma true so that we set our random pitch boolean to be true. Then go back to Unity. Now when we press play, when I move now, you can hear it's going up and down pitches. It's very subtle, but I think it makes quite a big difference in not getting too annoying on the player's ears. And as before, we can go up to our chests and these will all be the same without their pitch affected. Very cool. Oh, and I almost forgot we didn't test out the slider in our settings. So of course, by default, this is to the max. So let's take a listen again. We'll listen to this on max volume. Go to our settings and put this on half. Go to our next chest. That's a bit quieter. And now let's go to our final chest. Turn the settings all the way down to zero. Open our chest. It didn't make a sound, but wait a minute. My player's footsteps are still making sounds. We've forgotten something in our script. In your sound effect manager script, of course we have our audio source volume being set when we change our slider. Let's duplicate this line and add in our random pitch audio source as well. Silly me. Okay, one final quick test. Footsteps. Audible. Turn that sound down. It's silent. No chest sound. Oh no. Let's turn that back up. I miss that little jingle. Beautiful. Bap, bap, bap. Nice. So cool, we've got sound effects now. I set up this one in as well just before our next video, which is going to be adding in NPCs and their NPC dialogue. So be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on that. And as you saw in this video, it's very handy to be a member of our Patreon so you have access to all our previous scripts. Or as always, you can grab this whole template with all the finished features as well as any future updates that you'll get for free. So check it out if you haven't already. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!